Good morning, boys and girls. Good to see you today. We're going to sing two hymns that you probably don't know. We haven't sung these before, but they're all about King Jesus. And I want you to listen the first time I sing it through, and then I want you to sing it through with me. I'm only going to sing the first verse but to the first one, but then we'll sing both verses. This, this hymn says, For a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise. Remember what I told you redeem means? To buy something back and how Jesus redeemed us from sin. The glories of my God and King, the triumphs of his grace. We're singing about King Jesus. He breaks the power of canceled sin. When he died on the cross, he canceled all of our sin. And when we ask him into our heart, he breaks that power of any sin. He sets us free, free from our sin. His blood can make the worst, worst person clean. He can make the foulest clean. His blood avail for me. Mean Avail means available. And so listen as I sing just the first verse, and then I want you to sing both of them. You ready? Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. Sing with me now. Let's start again at the beginning. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of his grace. He breaks the power of cancel sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foul is clean. His blood avail for me. Yes, boys and girls, he can set us free from sin once we ask him into our heart. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. In our story today, we're going to learn that the Israelite people were asking for a king, but they were asking for the wrong kind of king. They were jumping ahead of what God had planned for his people. So we're going to, that's what, why I wanted us to sing about our King Jesus. The next one talks about Jesus is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, he's the great shepherd. And listen to all the names that describe him. And we can uh, pray these and praise him when we have our popcorn praise. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Rock means he's strong. Almighty God is he. He's the king of kings, mighty than anyone. Bow down before him. That's what we would do before our king. Love and adore him. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. Listen to me sing it one time, and it's easy to pick up, and I want you to sing it with me. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, he's a great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Almighty God is he. Bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. Now you try it with me. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He's a great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Almighty God is he, bow down before him, love and adore him. His name is wonderful, 
Jesus, my Lord. Yes, boys and girls, he is almighty. He is our shepherd who guides and directs us. And he wanted to guide and direct the Israelite people, but they jumped against him, uh, ahead of him. And, you know, we've learned that before. When we run ahead of God, things never do work out. So let's listen to our story and see what else he wants to teach us. He definitely wants to teach us that, that we should never run ahead of him. But let's pray and ask him. And I want you to listen very carefully to this story and see what you we can learn that God wants us to learn about King Jesus. Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for your true word, the Bible, that it always has a lesson for us. Help us to open our hearts as well as our ears to hear what you want to teach us. Amen. Well, boys and girls, in our story is taken from 1 Samuel 8 through 10. You remember Samuel was the last of the judges, and he was still judging over Israel. But he had, this was about 20 years after the Ark of the Covenant was returned. Remember last week, it was captured by the Philistines, and then uh, they returned it because everywhere that it went with them, God caused bad things to happen because they had, had stolen it from the Israelite people, and this was God's property. And so um, we learned that once it was restored now, and this has been about 20 years later, Samuel has become very old, and he had been judging and ruling over the Israelite people. But he had two sons. One's name was Joel, and the other's name was Abijah. Well, he was getting so old that he began to let his sons rule. Now, boys and girls, Samuel loved God. And the people had come back to God. They'd gotten rid of all those idols, and they had begun to worship God again and follow God and do what God told them to. But when um, Joel and Abijah began to rule, they began to uh, worship false gods and do things against God's will. And so the leaders of Israel went to Samuel, and they said, you are a good judge. And, but your sons have, have not followed your example. We don't want them to lead us anymore. So they did recognize that the sons were um, evil, but then they jumped ahead of God. They said, we want to be like the other nations. These were God's people. He wanted them to be different. He wanted them to be separate. That's what God does. When we ask him into our heart, it separates us from the evil in the world and we start following Jesus. And that's what he wanted the Israelite people to do. He didn't want them to be like every other nation. But they kept uh, pestering um, Samuel and saying, we want, we want a king, we want a king. Well, Samuel didn't know what to do, except the right thing was to go to God. And that's just what Samuel did. And so he went to God and asked him, he said, what must I do? I don't know what to do. They're demanding a king. Samuel, give them what they want, God said. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. That's what God told Samuel. So Samuel did just what um, God said for him to do. He went and explained to the Israelite, um, how the Israelites said this wasn't going to be a good thing, that an earthly king would rule over them. He could make them serve in the army. He could make their daughters work for him. Or he could take away their fields and their servants. He warned them that they were going to regret asking for a king. But the Israelites didn't care. They said, give us a king. Well, in the meantime, there was a wealthy man named Kish. And he was looking for some of his donkeys that had wandered off. So he told his son Saul to go and take a servant and look for these donkeys. It was a lot of them. And Saul was very handsome and very tall and just looked like he could be in charge of anything. And he began to search for the animals. And despite his search, he was unable to find the donkeys. And he was just about ready to give up. Wait, his servant said. There's a man of God in the city. 
Who is he talking about? Samuel. Said, let's go and ask him if he knows where we might find those donkeys. So Saul and his servant found the man of God, Samuel. Don't worry about the donkeys, Samuel said. They've been found. And he invited Saul to have dinner with him. Well, the next morning, Samuel told Saul that God had chosen him to be the king over the Israelite people. Well, Saul was so surprised because he was from the little tribe of Benjamin. He said, how can this be? I'm from the smallest tribe in Israel, not from the most important one. Samuel said, you're who God's chosen. And so Samuel used oil. That's what they would do that, to make set somebody apart, and he anointed him means he put it on his head. You will be king, Samuel said. And he gave Saul some instructions, and he sent him home. And at that very moment, the Spirit of God was with Saul. Well, a good while later, sometime later, Samuel gathered all the Israelite people. They still didn't know a king had been chosen. He, in, he invited them all to come together and he presented Saul to them as their new king. But where was Saul? They couldn't find him. Where is he? He was introducing him. Well, the people ran to get, and they said, then God told them, told Samuel. He said, there he is. He's hidden behind the, su the supplies over there. Well, the people ran and got Saul and brought him and began to yell, Long live the king! Long live the king! They were so excited to have a king. But boys and girls, they had run against God. And when we run, against, a run ahead of God, and when we run ahead of God, we go against his plan. He has plans for us, for you and for me. And that's why it's important for us to pray every day, to read our Bible, to see what God's plans are. But they didn't do that. They ran ahead. They demanded a king. And so God gave them their king. God had intended for a heavenly king to rule over them. Just the way God had planned. But the Israelites didn't trust him. And they ran ahead. God had a plan. And at a later day, God's plan would be fulfilled. And that would be Jesus King of kings and Lord of lords. God would send Jesus to rule the entire world and Jesus would be the perfect king. And that's why we sang this song this morning, that his name is wonderful. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. But what else did we learn? He's a great shepherd. He's a rock of all ages. That means he's steady. He never falters. He's always with us. He's made all these promises. And remember, we've learned he's trustworthy. His promises are always fulfilled. And then we sang the other hymn that said, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my great Redeemer's praise. We want to sing it with the loudest voice we have. That's why we say for a thousand tongues. And we want to sing about the glories of my God and King, the triumphs that means the winning of his grace. And remember what we've learned? Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. And the, what the triumph would be that Jesus would come and take, be the perfect sacrifice for your sins and mine. But what have we learned? There's one important thing that we need to do in order for us to accept Christ and him to come live in our hearts. We must confess our sins. And if we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9 says, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Make us right before God in relationship to God again. It says his power, his, he breaks the power of cancel sin. Sin was in control of us before we asked Jesus to come into our heart. And then he, we were prisoners to sin, but he sets the prisoner free. 
And that's why I wanted us to sing those hymns this morning. So let's praise God now. Let's praise him for King Jesus, who is King of kings and Lord of lords, and who rules over all. Remember, I always like to praise him for being sovereign, in control of everything. You know, he's in control of everything in our world. And he is um, a rock. He's solid. He never falters. He never falls. And he's our good shepherd. He leads and guides us. So we've got lots to praise him for. Let me hear you pop those popcorn praises off. Remember, it's like perfume to his ears. Let's pray. Let's Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we praise God just now. Dear God, I praise you that you are my redeemer. You bought me back from sin. You set me free. You are king of kings and lord of lords. You are almighty. You are all powerful. You are all knowing. Your plans are always perfect. You are trustworthy. You are the perfect king that God sent. We could go on praising you forever, but God, thank you, thank you, thank you for sending the perfect king to save us from our sins, King Jesus. And now we want to thank you for it, Lord. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree from sin to set me free. Someday he's coming back. What glory that will be. Wonderful his love to me. Thank you, Lord. For saving my soul, thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Amen. Well, boys and girls, I ask you today, have you asked King Jesus to come in and rule over you and take control of your life? If not, do that today. Talk to mom and dad. Talk to Pastor Ron about the next step. I love you, and God loves you even more. Have a good week.